I've got this up here for two reasons. I promised you that if you'd see things and we'd talk about things that um, might be for sale. And this is one of those things. This uh, is destined to go uh, up for sale uh, in a booth that I have in our local antique mall. And uh, it would have already been there had it not been for the subject matter of it. And I wanted to use it for this video. So I've been keeping it around here. Something like this. And this is, a, like I said, it's a signed uh, and numbered print. Uh, I could tell you who the artist was. Doesn't really matter because I'm not asking, I don't ask big bucks for stuff like this. When I first got it, it had some stains uh, on it. I tried to remove them. It didn't work. Uh, brown, ugly looking blotches uh, in the white background. And finally, uh, I just decided that I liked the picture enough to keep it. The frame was worth what I was going to charge for the whole shooting match anyway. So I took some white um, paint and I painted over the stains. And uh, if you look real close, you can see that I did that. But a lot of people would look at this picture and never even know that that had happened to it. But at any rate, around on the picture in places there were stains and now there are none because I painted over them with white paint. What I really want to talk about is the subject matter of this picture. And as you can see, uh, it's a Bible laying on uh, some shawl work in front of a fern. And next to the Bible is an oil lamp. And, uh, and so I just like the picture. That's what, uh, the reason I bought it to start with. I like the subject matter of it. Uh, and it was something that if I can fix it to, to the point where uh, it, it might sell, then I would just kept it because I like the subject matter. What I really want to talk about in this portion of this video is the oil lamp. Not this oil lamp, but two other oil lamps. And before I do that, I want to talk about oil lamps in general. We see them all the time nowadays for sale and uh, people like to have them for novelty items or uh, emergency lighting, whatever. But there was a time, uh, not in my lifetime or yours, but in our ancestors' lifetime, when a lamp such as this was a necessity. You needed one. You, you had to have one or you lived in the dark 15 or 16 hours a day. And so uh, one of the things that a young couple starting out needed to have was either a lamp or its close cousin, a lantern, which burns some kind of fuel, usually uh, fuel oil, kerosene, uh, in older, older times, whale oil. But uh, in our ancestors' time, they, they burned uh, lamp oil or kerosene in these lamp, uh, lights and lanterns. And so a young couple who were just starting out house, housekeeping one of the things that they needed was an oil lamp. Now, what we have here are two oil lamps. Uh, these are in my possession. Uh, I've had them for a good while now. Uh, I'm not a collector of oil lamps. I don't particularly like them or want to have them. But these two are special. This one that has the red oil in it belonged to my wife's great grandmother. This lamp belonged to Louis Ray. That's L-O-U-I-E. And I'm told that wasn't short for Louise. Her name was Louis. And she was Cloney Ray mother. Now, Cloney Ray, her name was spelled C-L-O-N-A. How that got to be Cloney, I don't know, but she was Cloney. Cloney Ray married Dory Robbins. Now, Dory Robbins, his name was spelled D-O-R-A, and his name got to be Dory the same way hers got to be Cloney, I guess. Anyway... They were Mary Robbins' parents. Mary Robbins married Willard Cogan, 
Their second daughter's name was Betty Louise Colgan, and I married her when she was 16 years old. 56 years later, we're still married. So, Louie Ray owned this lamp when she was a young woman keeping house, and she was my wife's great grandmother. That makes this rather ordinary oil lamp very special. We don't want it to go anywhere. We don't want anything to happen to it. This lamp <laughs> belonged to my great grandmother. Her name was Toki. Now, no, you don't spell that T O A A. Actually, you do. I think her name was T-O-K-A. Yes, it was. She was called Toki. She was called Toka. She was called Toke uh, by various members of her family. I get most of my information from her from my Aunt Colleen. And I got all my information about this lamp from my Aunt Colleen, my mother's youngest sister. So this lamp, too, is rather ordinary example of an oil lamp. It's, uh, I like it better than this one for the pedestal form that it has, and it just has a nicer, older look than this one does. In fact, I think it is quite a bit older than this one. This one was, you know, I talked about a few minutes ago, needing uh, a lamp. If you were young people setting up housekeeping, one of the things that was a necessity to you was a light source in that in their day an oil lamp this lamp and it is i'm going to stop my for just a minute and right here it has a crack in it and it's a pretty serious crack when aunt colleen first gave me this lamp that crack was small and that's the only blemish that the lamp had now it has another crack that's going around the base and it has this crack that's gone all the way almost to the bottom of this globe. And uh, that bothers me, but I don't know what to do about it because this lamp has done nothing uh, but sit well protected uh, in a glass doored bookcase uh, since I've owned it. And so I don't know what's making the cracks in it get worse. If any of you got a clue, uh, you might put something in the comments or drop me a note or something about how to keep it from further deteriorating. But to tell you the truth, it's something that's just inevitable, I guess, because this lamp hasn't been mistreated, banged, misused in any form. Okay, let's get back to setting up housekeeping. Toka, her maiden name was G, G-E-E, -E, married uh, Ollie Hudson. And when they got married, this is the lamp that they had to set up housekeeping with. It was their sole light source. And I know that because Aunt Colleen has told me that a jillion times. The story of this being Coca's first uh, oil lamp that she set up housekeeping with. So this lamp too, even though it is showing some severe damage, uh, it's not going anywhere either. This lamp has far more value to me and hopefully to my children and grandchildren than any other oil lamp anywhere because of its history. It belonged to Toki G, who married Ollie Hudson, who were the mother and father of Wordish Hudson, who married Sam Eddington, and Sam Eddington and Wardus Hudson Eddington were my mother's parents. And uh, this lamp then was my great grandmother. Okay, I'm going to put these lamps aside. Uh, they're going back to a safe place. I did want to, I, I want my family to know the significance of these two lamps so that they don't go anywhere. I like stools. They're one of the things that I like 
And when I like something, I'm apt to buy them and own them. So I have these. And I probably have uh, oh, maybe 10 or 15 more stools somewhere. I can think of a couple that are in the house. Um, there's three or four maybe for sale in my antique booth. And there's more than one, but less than 10. Uh, on the other side of that door there in that pole barn because I like them and when they're the right price I buy them and then when somebody likes them more than me I sell them so I have a lot of them I have owned a lot of them and I'll probably continue to own them these well let's talk about this one first Okay, this one is, let's call her uh, Plain Jane. She is a Plain Jane little stool. Actually, the ends are made from plywood. The top is made from plywood. It's, it's probably half inch plywood. And the leg supports are short pieces of two by four regular construction two by four. So she's put together with nails and originally Elma's glue. Pretty common looking little stool, really sturdy. It's gonna last a long time. It's already lasted a long time. It's probably, I wanna guess 30 to 35 years old. And it's as sturdy and as solid as it was the day it was finished. And something like this, if I saw it just out somewhere and somebody wanted, uh, say, $10 for it, I would think, mm, that's borderline. If I liked it real well, I might pay it. I might offer them six or seven or eight and maybe own it. This one, however, is worth way more than why? My youngest daughter, Brett, the one you've heard of already because she helped me uh, go to my uh, youngest brother's place and uh, retrieve the projects from his garage. When she was a young girl, and I'm guessing uh, maybe middle school age, possibly early high school age, uh, she and I made this stool together. I instructed her about how uh, to do things, how to use the saw, how to use the nails, how to use the glue, how to use the clamps. And uh, she pretty much already knew how to use the paintbrush. But <clears throat> she built this stool with my supervision. It was a joint project. I would say uh, I don't know whether it's her first project or not, but it's her first project with dad. And <clears throat> I still have it. And it'd be hard to get it away from me. She, of course, she could have it if she wanted it, but she's interested it to my keeping. So this still uh, was made by a young father and his young daughter, and it's in her family. This tool is a more primitive stool than this one. In fact, uh, if you look at it, it's got primitive form. It has what I would refer to as boot jack legs. And uh, if you don't know what boot jack legs are, that's what they are. And they get that name from having the appearance of a boot jack. If you don't know what a boot jack is, I can tell you about that too. But uh, Google it and uh, call this a 
challenge to learn something today. That's a boot deck and, and, and learn what a boot deck is if you don't know it. It has external cross members and they are nailed to the legs. It has one solid board top and it is nailed to the legs and the cross members. It also has painting on it. It says 37th anniversary. And it has writing in there and you can't read it. I can't hardly read it in good light. And without my glasses in good light, I can't read it, but I know what it says. It has my name on it. It says Hard Times Original and it has a date. And uh, based on the 37th anniversary, I'm gonna say it's whatever date 37 plus 1964 is, and it's in February. I made this, gave it to my sweetheart on our 37th anniversary, and I put that on there to commemorate it. You think, woohoo, aren't you the big spender? Well, here it is still, all these years later, and uh, she treasures it. And our children will treasure it someday. <clears throat> this one looks a whole lot like that one, and it should, because it was made at the same time um, with the same form, used square nails out of the same can, and used poplar lumber salvaged from the same primitive church pew. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this and consequently that one. Also on the inside of this one, I noticed today when I was getting ready to uh, make this video, what's written inside of it is basically my name, Hard Times Original, but in addition to the date, there's something else in there that looks like it says Zach, Z-A-C-K. And that's significant because I have a grandson named Zach and his older brother named Jordan. He and I made a stool together one time. Jordan still has his stool. I don't remember the details about it, but he has it and he probably knows the details about it. This one, I'm wondering if Zach didn't have some part in it too, and I don't really know that. I tried to call and get a hold of him and find that out before I made this video, but uh, he was unavailable to me this evening, and so I didn't want to just not make the video. So we have a mystery. Maybe I'll tell you later about what I find out about whether Zach had a part in making this stool. The last thing I want to say about the stools, the anniversary stool and the green uh, cousin to it, possibly a Zach stool, is they were made from scrap lumber. Of course, you can see it didn't take a lot of lumber. This is old hand plain yellow poplar and square nails, and those were salvaged from old primitive church pews. Now, I didn't cut up old shoes just to make little stools out of them. These are little pieces of wood left over from other projects that were large enough and right, R-I-G-H-T means correct, correct enough to make what looks like uh, mid-18th century primitive cricket bench or stool. So that's the scoop on this one and the red one. The last one I want to talk about is, in my way of thinking, the most important of the four. There it is. Now this one, again, is yellow poplar. Uh, All of it, the supports, the top, the ends. These ends have a, just a curved 
uh, cut out in them. Uh, part of the original leg here is gone because it split at some point in the field's history and was lost and so therefore is lost. It's unretrievable to us. These leg supports were recessed into a slot. This was put together with finishing nails. And unfortunately, uh, not glue. It was just nailed together. And sometime in the young uh, history of this stool, it got loose and rickety and began to come apart. Uh, I know that because of the story I'm going to tell you next. I'm going to get up, move the camera, and uh, look at something else behind me here on the wall. And when I finish sharing that with you, we'll come back and I'll finish the story about this stool. This is a picture that I made in 1975 using colored pencil. In fact, the picture above the picture of my grandfather is my mother when she was a young girl. My sister tells me in that picture, uh, our mother was 13 years old. As you can see, he is making, or he has already made, and he is painting a stool much like the one we have on the table behind me. I'm going to read this to you because I made this when uh, I built this room in 2012 and uh, I began to decorate the wall of it and when this picture uh, went on the wall I wrote this and made this to go with it. It says Christmas 1953. The three Mooneyham children awoke to find that Santa had left them each gift. Luke and Kurt had metal cat pistols with white plastic grips and holsters with silver conchos. Diane had a rubber baby doll. For all three, there was a wooden stool painted bright yellow and adorned with a decal from a popular nursery rhyme. These stools had actually been made not by Santa's elves, but by their grandfather, Sam Eddington. Many years and several coats of paint later, one of these still, still survives and is in my possession. In 1975, I tried to capture this memory in a colored panel, colored pencil portrait of my grandfather as I imagined him creating these children's gifts. I gave the picture to my mother for her birthday. It too is now in my possession. It is now 2012. I write this record in hope that the stool, the picture, and the story may be treasured and shared with the future generations of my family. This read to you in a nutshell is what I'm trying to do with these videos. What I did in 2012 when I wrote that information down, framed it, covered it in glass, hung it on a wall in association with a picture that I'd made of my grandfather. It tells about this stool. It tells about my grandfather. It tells about the Christmas of 1953 when there was me, my brother, Kurt, my sister, Diane, and Santa brought us these stools made by our grandfather. The other two didn't survive. Somehow this one did. My mother kept it. She painted it many times. At one time it had pounds tooth black and white uh, shelf paper on the top of it. Uh, it's been at least black and red since it was yellow. I don't see much left, uh, much other color history on it. So I'm gonna say it was yellow and then it was black, now it's red. It's mine, it's not going anywhere. 
someone in my family will someday own it. Uh, I hope they own it. And the same person has the picture of my grandfather and the letter that I wrote about my grandfather and about this school. And they can all stay together. And great, great, great grandchildren who I've never met and never will will know the origin of this school and the story of their grandfather, of my grandfather making it for me.